If you're supplementing with curcumin, you need to stop what you're doing right now and watch till the very end. I'm Dr. J, and for almost two decades, I've been working with entrepreneurs and urban professionals in Vancouver, British Columbia here. As a naturopathic doctor, a performance and productivity coach, I use comprehensive blood work and functional genetic testing to help formulate precision and personalized medicine programs to help urban professionals get the most out of their brains and their bodies. Curcumin is one of the most used supplements in the entire world, and we use it a lot for anti-inflammation and for pain. The problem is that there are times when curcumin can actually be dangerous and when we shouldn't be using it with certain people. So in this video, I wanna dig a little bit deeper into turmeric and curcumin, the active constituent in turmeric, and really understand when it's going to be beneficial, when it might be dangerous for you to use, and how to use it most appropriately. So the turmeric spice comes from a plant that's a lot like ginger, and that's what gives it its really bright orange color. It's been used traditionally in Asian and Ayurvedic medicines to manage pain as an antioxidant antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. And it's one of our best anti-inflammatory supplements and it's used really across the world and in large doses for a lot of people. The problem is that curcumin can be unsafe and even dangerous in some circumstances because of what it does to how your body is able to detoxify certain chemicals in your body. What's really important about turmeric supplements is that we actually are looking for curcumin. Curcumin and curcuminoids are the most important active constituents of that turmeric spice. And that's what you need to be looking for when you're choosing a turmeric or curcumin product, that it's a standardized extract that has a certain level of curcuminoids. Now, one of the problems with supplements in general that are available on the retail market really across the world is that we don't have any major standardization for these chemical constituents. And we also don't have companies that are able or willing to provide certificates of analysis. My recommendation is that you don't purchase supplements from companies that will not provide you with a certificate of analysis to prove that what's on the label is in the product and that there's going to be consistency from batch to batch every single time you take that supplement. I'll give you a real quick hint here, almost all retail products will not provide certificates of analysis. And that's why it's really important that you speak with your integrative healthcare practitioner who's got experience with supplements before starting any supplements, especially when combined with medications. So the key fact that I wanna talk about today is that curcumin and turmeric in general has an effect on our detoxification enzymes that can actually make curcumin quite dangerous or inappropriate to use in certain circumstances. What none of us are talking about is that curcumin downregulates the activity of an enzyme called CYP1A2, which is part of your detoxification enzymes. Now, CYP1A2 is part of a much bigger subset of enzymes that helps us with detoxification. It's a system that we call the P450 set of enzymes or isoenzymes. Very important for detoxification. What we need to know about 1A2 though is that it metabolizes a host of different chemicals that come through our body, most notably caffeine and estrogen, but lots of other medications and drugs are also metabolized, broken down, and eliminated by this particular enzyme. So when we take curcumin, curcumin slows down the activity of this enzyme 1A2. In integrative medicine, slowing down 1A2 and phase one detoxification to which this enzyme belongs can sometimes be a very good thing because we get this bottleneck between phase one and phase two detoxification where we get an accumulation of these negative byproducts of detox before they can be cleared out of the body in phase two detoxification. So when we have that bottleneck, one of the solutions is that we can slow down phase one detoxification so that we don't get the accumulation of those reactive intermediates. In functional genetics, knowing your status for the 1A2 gene really helps us understand how your body might be breaking down estrogen, whether or not that's a very favorable level of metabolism or type of metabolism for your body and for your health. It can help us understand whether or not caffeine is going to need to be regulated in terms of your diet and your lifestyle as well. So when people ask me the question all the time, you know, is coffee or is caffeine actually bad for me? The answer is it depends. And a lot of it depends depends on your 1A2 status, how quickly you can break down caffeine. So in short, curcumin and turmeric can be wonderful, wonderful supplements for managing pain. They are an excellent anti-inflammatory and an alternative to a lot of the pain medications that we might use in conventional medicine. 1A2 is also a very important enzyme for detoxification. And by slowing down or speeding up 1A2, we can affect outcomes in terms of our health. Knowing your 1A2 status is gonna be really important for understanding whether or not curcumin is an appropriate and safe 
safe supplement for you to be using, especially in combination with other supplements, which may also be altering the function of 1A2 and other medications that might be broken down by 1A2. For instance, if you have a drug that is being broken down by 1A2 and you're taking curcumin, because curcumin slows down the detoxification or metabolism of that particular drug, that drug is going to have a larger effect. You may have more side effects, you may get more negative effects from that drug, or it might be more potent. So we need to know that kind of information when we're using medications. And this is how we are beginning to be able to individualize treatments with medications and pharmaceuticals, as well as through supplements and nutraceuticals. So bottom line, don't be taking curcumin unless you understand your 1A2 status and how you might be modulating it due to other supplements or medications. By doing a comprehensive functional genetic test, this is just one piece of information that we can get about how your body is built to function at its best so we can make the best decisions for your health in terms of diet, lifestyle, supplements, and medications. And remember, don't take curcumin without understanding your genetic makeup. You could be doing more harm than good, especially when it comes to estrogen-related cancers and estrogen-related disorders. If you want to learn more about functional genetic testing and how we can learn about how our body and our brain are built to function at their best, how we can develop personalized medicine programs from genetic data, you're going to want to follow this channel because that's all I talk about. That's my jam. Now, if you're using curcumin and are looking to use other supplements to get the most out of your brain and body, check out my other video on the top five supplements for brain fog and fatigue. If you know someone who's using a ton of curcumin and raves about curcumin all the time, but probably doesn't know this information, be sure to send them this video. And if you have any questions or concerns, make sure to hit me up in the comments below.